Welcome back to Beyond Crazy, everybody. So recently, in a Crazy Pieces vlog, we discussed how I recently found out that there's quite a few things that I can't, or I shouldn't be eating, that I have been eating. Like what? I shouldn't be eating dairy, cow's milk. Um, I need to get clarification from my doctor whether it's a lactose thing or a dairy thing or whatnot. Um, but yeah, I also can't be eating sesame, uh, almonds, peanuts. Eggs. Eggs. Was... Eggs are huge. I didn't realize, I, I'm basically allergic to eggs. My intolerance for eggs was like completely red off the chart. I shouldn't touch egg whites or egg yolks. And I love eggs. I used to eat eggs like three a morning daily. Every it, day. Every day. It was bad. We're gonna do a test. Get away from me. Get away from me. I get a rash on my hands like right here. It's the weirdest thing. I wake up in the morning, my hands are all itchy. Yeah. So anyways, I've been uh, struggling recently because my go-to like as a snack, I used to love to just put a, a plate of chips down cover it with some cheese, microwave it for 45 seconds, throw some hot sauce on there, and bam, you got a snack. And I can't have cheese anymore. At least, not cow's milk cheese. <laughs> so today, we're gonna be making something delicious. I love hummus, and I don't eat it enough, but I can actually eat hummus. It's one of the things I can eat. Now, we did look in the store. We were gonna buy some pre-made hummus. It's like, hey, that's nice and easy. Get some vegetables. Uh, but we realized that traditional hummus does have tahini in it, which derives from sesame seeds. Which I can't eat. Which is, he does have an intolerance to sesame seeds. Right now, he is completely eliminating anything, even if it's a minor intolerance. So we're gonna make our own. We're just not gonna do the tahini in it. And we're gonna see how delicious we can make it. I'm super excited and I'm super hungry. So let's get started. Hi. They make they called it tahini, hard. right? Tahini. No. That's not the same? No, this is tahini. You're missing the eye. Uh, well, okay, so we add some water and it becomes tahini. Does it, it work? You're allergic to it. You can't. I don't have my glasses on. What, what's in there? Not sesame. <laughs> I don't think that's the same thing. Yeah, no. Not, not the same. It could work, Jim. It could work. I'm following a recipe because I've never made this before. They call this aqua frita. It's the liquid that is derived after you cook chickpeas that it's normally stored in and canned in. Um, we're gonna use a little bit of it later. I don't think we're gonna need all three cans worth, but I'm just hanging on to it because that's what the direction said. You pour this in and yeah, makes it a little smooth. Isn't hummus smooth. just chickpeas? Yep. Like atoms? Look at me know my stuff. Good job. <laughs> We're gonna wash our chickpeas. Everything that I've read says you should wash them before you use them, so give them a good little bath. Is that maybe when they're like hard, not these soft canned ones? Maybe. Uh, might as well wash them. While my good man Joe is doing that, we're gonna be adding Anaheim peppers and roasted red peppers to our hummus. So I'm gonna get started. So Aaron's okay, trying to burn okay, himself. Okay. Let's see if we can use some tongs. But every time you grab tongs, what do you have to do, Aaron? They work. Oh yeah, see, we're getting color. Getting some color. The first step would normally be to combine the lemon juice and the tahini and the food processor and blend it for about a minute. Um, but we're not using tahini, so crystals being our big helper. Being our big helper? You have kids, because if you're talking like that. <laughs> now for one can of chickpeas, it says to use a large lemon. These are medium sized, so hopefully it's lemony enough, but we'll see. Look at oh, she oh, wants joy. She got shots today. Oh, are you feeling okay? She's nine pounds now. Nine pounds, Joy. Putting on the pounds. Are you giving Sadie a hug? So 
since we are using tahini, we're going to use some olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. Chickpeas in. I noticed that as it's going, it's not really making it pasty enough, so we need more liquid. So this is where the uh, aqua friba comes in. I don't know. Scared. I don't mind my shirt. Got a little Bahama Bucks on it. I caught a butterfly. No, you didn't. I know what it is. It's fine. We're still working on the texture, but now we're starting to focus on the taste. We tasted it. Right now it's just chickpeas and lemon and olive oil. So it's kind of lemony. So we're gonna add our garlic. And ground cumin. Ground cumin? I don't know how much I should add. That's a good question. You put human in there? Cumin. Cumin. Cumin with the C. C U M I N. I like cumin, so. Hey, I got a question for you, Aaron. Mm. If we were making this during the fall, could we do pumpkin spice? If you really wanted to, yes. I suppose you could. Pumpkin spice should be outlawed. Just so. <gasps> what? Because Why Crystal you say should that? get all of it. Really? You like pumpkin spice? Yes. Pumpkin cookies are so good. We added several cloves of garlic, but we're not quite getting that garlic pop. So I'm adding a little bit of extra minced garlic. Uh, we're getting close to the texture that we want. It's still got it's a little bit it's of- kind of gritty. Gritty. Hey, Aaron. I don't know how to do the gritty. Do the gritty. <laughs> no. I'm gonna add half of our Anaheim peppers and half of our uh, red roasted red bell peppers uh, for flavoring, and then we can garnish with the rest of it later on. Then we add plenty of olive oil. Ariana, Ariana's like, I have some pretzels that I want to try it with. She brings me these pretzels, and I can actually eat them. So good. Yeah, they're really good. They are really good, actually. How is it in the hummus? It's good. You need to try it. The pretzel or the chicken or the hummus? Um, both. Yeah. Gotta make it look good. Oh yeah. Sure. Been waiting for. I haven't seen you smile like, smile like that in a while. Is it good? Where's yours? Is it everything? <laughs> <laughs> Personally, it is my most favorite hummus that I've ever had. And I don't know if it's because when something's homemade and you put your own time and effort and love into it, it just makes it taste a little bit better. Delicious. We lost one. Man down, man down. He'll be remembered. Three second rule? No. <laughs> Even though I'm cooking it, I'm still not gonna take that. You know your kids, you know where they've been. You're not eating it off the floor. Right. Hey you guys, welcome back. It is the next day. I'm still struggling with food. Um, the, why can't I think of the name? Well, what did we make the other day? Hummus. The hummus turned out amazing. Uh, I'm looking forward to eating more of it, but I can't just eat hummus the rest of my life, so I have to expand my horizons. So Joe said, you know, take your favorite meal and try to substitute what you can in it to still continue making it. Um, so my favorite meal is Zupa Toscana. I actually haven't made it in a couple months now that I'm cooking it, I realize that. Um, kids, soup, it's summertime and they just don't always go together but it's more of a comfort food and I'm kind of needing comforting right now because I'm just struggling with my food options so I've already browned my meat my uh, onions and garlic I just added the potatoes now I need to add some soup I like to use uh, like chicken stock or beef stock 
Uh, let me see if I have any. No, no. I do. I've got it. Double check the ingredients here. Chicken stock contains less than 2% of... Aaron, Aaron's eyes are not so good. That'll work. That'll work. It's the most interesting thing. So I found out that I'm allergic to eggs. So eggs are like baby chickens, right? But I can eat chicken. How does that make any sense? I don't know. You Sorry. can eat beef, but you Sorry, can't Sorry, baby have... chickens, but good news is I'm not eating you guys anymore, so. You can have beef, but you can't have cow milk. That's true. Doesn't make any sense. It is know. a weird world. Now, the reason I chose this meal, so uh, there's two ingredients in this that I really shouldn't eat when I make it the regular way, and that is Parmesan cheese and also the heavy whipping cream that gives it, it takes it from more of like a red, soupy flavor to kind of like a mild uh, orange flavor. Uh, you add the heavy whipping cream like 10 minutes or five minutes before it's really done cooking. But I chose this because I was at the store and I found this heavy whipping alternative. It's a substitute, it's dairy free, all the ingredients I'm good with. So we're gonna put this in a little bit. I do need to cook the potatoes until they're done. I was talking to my sister-in-law and she said that Parmesan has like the least amount of lactose of any cheese. So normally people that are lactose intolerant can do Parmesan cheese okay. Um, but I found a plant-based Parmesan while I was at the store. So I'm excited. Normally at the very end, after you've served a bowl, you, you know, shred some Parmesan, just like Olive Garden would. This is an Olive Garden recipe. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier. I loved it at Olive Garden and then I made it better and I don't like going back. So, yeah. All right, 15, 17 minutes has passed. The potatoes probably still need another eh, five minutes or so. But now is when we add the whipping cream. But we're not adding our normal whipping cream. Add whip it, some whip it. Other whipping cream. Oh, this is weird. That's really thick. Hold on, let's make sure it's good. October 14th of this year. Lasts a lot longer than non whipping like regular heavy whipping cream. Oh yeah, totally tastes fine. <laughs> As we're putting it in, like, did this go bad somehow on us? Well, I should have checked that before. Honestly, that tastes like, if you whipped that up a little bit, you could make uh, whipped cream out of it. So, see how the soup is kind of all red? Now that we've added the whipping cream, it's gonna turn and mellow out to like a brownish color. Kind of creamier looking. Creamier looking. This is also when we add the kale. You don't want to add the kale too soon because you don't want it to be too mushy. You want it to have a little bit of crunch, that's it. But. Now Aaron, I don't really love kale. Why are you putting kale in there? Kale is a superfood and it's very healthy for you. And it, I think it tastes good in this meal. The way that Zupa Toscana works, I don't know, it just, it modifies the flavor. If you've ever just eaten straight kale, like, it's not that great. Kind of bitter. I feel like I'm a, I'm a cow that just went out <laughs> and ate grass in the yard. But it is delicious in your Zupa. Absolutely. I absolutely love it in Zupa. Okie day. I don't know if we have any footage of me making this previously and what it looked like. I'll try to find some so we can put it side by side. It looks the same. I got the teeth open. I tore on the perforated edge, guys. I promise you I did. It's a childproof container. Just cut it open. I did cut it. I got it. Is anybody else hoping to see him tear it like a bag of chips and just Alright. Smells like Parmesan cheese. You wanna try? Yeah, I'm gonna try it. It smells like stinky feet tastes pretty close to Parmesan. I really actually like Parmesan. This is a little different. I'm not gonna lie. It's got me a little. Wait, 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 wait. Before you taste it, before you put that on, taste it with just your alternative so we can decide, is it better to just avoid it entirely? And, oh look, who else wants some? You got me to smell it by saying it smells like feet. And it Does it smell like stinky feet? Terrible. <laughs> I'm kind of... Oh. Oh yeah. 
That's good. That's very good. Can you even tell the difference? So I can't tell the difference good. in the heavy whipping cream. So that's a success. Let's try it with the Parmesan. Probably shouldn't do that much Parmesan, but eh, let's try it. My question is, will it melt like regular Parmesan? Normally, as you put it in there, it will melt a little bit. Aaron, look at that little, I want some food. Hi. Hi. So I want some food. Sophie. I want some food. Sophie. So it's not really melting like normal Parmesan would. It's just incredibly hot. I don't want to burn myself. I have a feeling if I didn't know and you brought this to me, I couldn't tell you the difference. I really do. So that's a success. You have a version that fits your 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 tummy's needs. Dietary needs. needs. Winner winner chicken dinner. No winner winner Zupa Toscana dinner. Yes. I really hope that you have enjoyed today's video, joining us on a hummus journey and a Zupa Toscana journey. But I'm gonna go eat my food because I'm hungry. We will catch you guys in the next one. Love you guys. Bye. Bye.